video walkthrough on a keystone bullet start in the back cable on that that's where you're gonna hook your cable up to if you're going something that provides cable bumper caps come off that's gonna be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose storage on this side all four corners you have them stabilizer jacks three quarter inch socket if you would rather use a drill makes it a little bit quicker well there's a crank for it if you dump area gray and your black Got your cap right here. I always make sure the valves are all the way closed before I take my cap off. Yep, these are closed. Um, and then I do black tape first after I have the hose hooked up. Once that's all the way empty, I do gray. That the gray water will flush out the hose. Water heater. Super simple. The only thing you guys have to do when you get it is put this plug in. Thread it in there by hand. Tighten it the rest of the way. I use a 15 16 uh, is the socket size for it. I use a 15 16 inch wrench um, socket and a, an extension with a wrench. That's a lot easier than the tool that you can buy for it. It's more like a box and wrench, and I always end up screwing my knuckles on there. Once you have it hooked, plugged in, look at water to it. It'll fill up, not to the water heater, to the camper. It'll fill up whether from pump or city. Then you'll be able to turn it on. Definitely recommend draining it after every trip because you don't want it sitting in there. And then to drain it, all you do is crack your pressure relief here. Water will come out once you stop, snap it closed, take your plug out. Um, and then you do have a cap right here that's going to be a cap for your fresh tank, and we'll show you that as we, as we go along. Other than that, clean in here and then clean back in here often. Show cord, it's built in, you can't lose it. When you want to have it look neat, just do it like that. When you're done with it, shove it all the way in, and then close it back up. Utility shower, you do have a little outdoor shower. Um, it does have hot and cold back there. For the sake of saving time, I won't open it up, but it's hot and cold. Got your fresh water fill and your city water. So this is where you hook your hose up for city. If you run off a of city water pressure, you won't need your pump. This is where you hook your, rest your hose into here. Gravity fill your fresh tank. Don't jam it in there, just rest it in there. And then monitor its progress in the monitoring panel as you're filling it. And you're good to go. When you use your fresh tank, you need to use your pump. And then here's that drain foot right there like I said you have to screw that cap under there when you're ready to fill it pass through storage there's that stabilizer jack crank right there tool for your hitch work someone will demonstrate that for you group 24 battery it's a new battery you don't have to worry about getting that changed in this in the winter I recommend taking your batteries out storing them somewhere warm warmer than being outside Excuse me. And if it's going to be a long time between trips, I definitely recommend disconnecting the negative lead off of your battery. Dual 20 pound cylinders. I might change your regulator. It's pointing this way. It's going to pull from this tank first. Once this one would be depleted, and you had this one on, there's a little diaphragm in here that'll open up, switch to pulling from this tank. If this, like I said, if this one would be on, however, this doesn't move indicating it's switched so keep that in mind and then somebody will split it in the middle like that thinking it's going to pull from both tanks equally but it does not work that way it's one or the other we'll go around here other side of that pass through storage furnace vent they make screens for these. They don't usually recommend you run them with the screens on. That just restricts airflow. But as far as like traveling or storing this, that screen is going to help debris from uh, making its way into there. Definitely try to clean this often too. Same with your fridge. Up in here, clean it often. Um, this is just for condensation. So some water will drip out of that occasionally. Do you have outdoor power? All your uh, G it's GFCI protected. All your GFCI. Excuse me. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit, so if one's going to trip, they're all going to trip. Come on in through here. Oh, nice one. So do have a Murphy bed here. I'll call it a Murphy bed, I guess. This is a jackknife couch, so you could use it as such. Grab up underneath it. Lift up storage underneath. You can sleep on it like this. Oh, you can unhook this. 
and have this thing fold out and then rearrange your mattress so you have a, a lot more comfortable spot to sleep on rather than just this couch. Make sure you do lock that up in the up position when you travel. Where does the exit window? Super simple to use. You can have it like that. Use it as a regular window if it's an emergency. Push all the way out, grab here, yank this off, and dive out the window. Controls for your awning. Extend and retract. Extend it now. They do not stop automatically when you go out. That's something you have to visually look. Look and see, and we'll show you. When you see the bare metal tube and the flap hang down, um, you're all the way out. Sometimes the flap won't hang down if it's rolled up for a while. Yeah, see, it's been rolled up for a little while. There you go. It is adjustable for pitch. You can grab right here. Pitch the awning down. Do the same thing on the other end. That way, if it was raining, you can have water run off to the corner rather than all the way along the edge. If it starts raining real bad, real heavy gusts of wind, roll your awning back up. Huh. It's not worth the wind. Try to. It's not worth it. Uh, the wind could rip the fabric, could bend one of these arms up. And then if you roll it in wet because you had to roll it in because it was raining, as soon as it gets sunny, dry out. Definitely recommend rolling it back out. Let the sun kind of dry the water out. Because if it sits for a while with moisture in it, it's going to get mold, it's going to smell, you're going to see it can get streaks all over it. Then you do have more light switches. One on the left is the lights in here, one on the right will do a porch light right there. Got a radio up here. Power turns it on. Mode, you can cycle through mode. iPod in, that's gonna be auxiliary cord right there. Bluetooth, oh, aux in, sorry. iPod in, oh, for USB, if you had a USB right there. Auxiliary in, AV in for the audio, the TV, radio again. Presets, push them over, say presets, you have different zones. Zone A is inside, so if you hit it, it'll just be outside. B is unused. C is outside, A is inside. So if you want it outside on, just inside on, or in vice versa. You can see how that could be useful. We have an alarm here. Skip your channels right here. Um, SD card, um, auxiliary in, headphone jack if you were going to use headphones, and then USB port, and then it is Bluetooth compatible. This right here turns into a bed. I'm not able to demonstrate it one-handed. Lift the table up. You can see the little shelves back there, the little clips. It'll unclip from those ones, clip down into that one. You can even see the little tab for it. It'll hook into there. You fold these legs up, the table will rest here. Then you take the back cushions and lay them flat on the table. Microwave works like your standard household microwave, nothing super special about it. Cooktop, very easy. Turn it to light, twist your striker. She lights right up. You can light them all at once. Just be quick about it and then don't turn it on to light and then walk away and then try to light it. <laughs> AC, super simple. Blue is cold, like your AC. The fan is just gonna run, the, the black is your fan that's just gonna run the fan on it. If you don't have heat, that's optional. And then red does not mean it's hot. Red just means it's the warmest the AC will get. Blue is the coldest it'll, it'll get. Antenna, super simple. Pull down to twist to adjust, you go up. You do want to make sure these little triangles right here are lined up like that before you lower it. And then you go down. This is when you, you'll need to do this if you're trying to Tune in a better signal. Common knocks the alarm there. Nine volt batteries. If that's how it's getting you low voltage chirps, replace the nine volt battery. You have a smoke alarm somewhere. Where does the smoke alarm go? That might be a smoke alarm. Oh, that's carbon monoxide. 
<laughs> oh, right here. <laughs> Smoke alarm, same thing. Nine volt batteries. This over here. Propane alarm. That's hardwired to the 12 volt system, so there's no batteries you have to worry about changing. Got you a breaker box here. All your breakers for your 110 volt appliances. All your fuses for your 12, so you have 15 and then two 40s. I definitely recommend keeping some spare fuses with you. Fridge is super simple. On or off. Auto or gas. Definitely recommend just leaving it on auto. Auto is going to default to 110. So if you're plugged in, that's what it's going to use. Someone would have trip over your shore cord, lose power at the campground and whatnot, and you had your propane on. This will automatically switch to running off of propane. Unlike your normal fridge at home, these do take about 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temperature, so keep that in mind. Thermostat for your furnace, super simple. Clip that over, starts running immediately. Then you have to change the temperature of the furnace. Very simple. Controls for your water heater, gas and gas and electric. You can run them both at once. Make sure you do have water in it if you are going to use electric, though. Monitoring panel, you can read gray, black, fresh battery. Very simple. How full it is. Definitely use the fresh as you're filling it. You don't want to wait until you hear water start spilling out. Wait until you see this full, until, until it reads full, and then empty it. And then if you want to use your fresh tank, turn your pump on. That's how you use your pump. Bathroom, heck of simple. Light, um, light, not fan vent here. Crank that open. Turn it on. Definitely recommend running the fan if you're going to take a hot shower. Shower is very simple, hot and cold. To divert it to the shower head, turn it on, lift this up. Water will come out your shower head. Then you have a GFCI protected outlet. This one's different than the other ones. This one has the reset button. So any outlet labeled GFCI, if it were to trip, this is the one you come and reset it at. Any toilet, super simple. Pedal on the side. As long as you're pushing that pedal down, it's just going to keep flushing. See? And then you'll light for in the bathroom. It's right here. A few more little, little odds and ends. Bunks. Top one has a 30 pound limit. And so this is one other thing. You do have another vent here. There's no fan. It's just a vent. And then besides the lights that turn on with this switch, the main two, every other light here will have to be turned on and off at the fixture. Alrighty then. Well... That concludes the video tour of your Keystone Bullet. Hope you found the video informative. Hope you guys enjoy using your camper. Goodbye.